Welcome to this sample audio clip, which comes from this series entitled multi hall Conversations with Jim Brown. In this excerpt, Jim interviews multi hall designer Richard Woods. Jim and Richard talk about designing and sailing small trimorans. In the full audio, they discuss Richard's new catamaran designs, new small trimoran designs, why building a boat in epoxy and plywood is still an unbeatable way to go in terms of both performance and money, and some insight into a few of the different locations around the world where Richard has enjoyed cruising over the past few years. You can obtain the complete audio along with all of the conversations in this series at www.outrigmedia.com. What next, Richard? What do you think about what are you thinking about doing next? Besides, you, it seems like you have a lot going on. Well, my uh, the original um, you've sailed in the Pacific Northwest, and your your family's up here as well. Um, and you know that there's very little wind here um, in the summer, but it's a spectacular cruising area. And the yeah. reason I've been sailing for over fifty years and. I'm not going to stop sailing just because I've got a motorboat. And my original idea was that we would have a small sailing boat on top of, you know, and carry it on our motorboat. And then we would motor somewhere and stop for a week and sail around and just stay sail around. And um, so that's still the, the um, concept. And even if we took the boat took our power cat on a truck and took it across to the east coast um we'd take our dinghy with uh, with us and we would sail in the interesting places because yeah there's lots of so, places that are not terribly interesting it's if you sail in the chesapeake from your house it's great but you go 30 20 miles south and you're into norfolk you don't want to go through norfolk yeah. on a boat you want to go to the next stage down which is the sort of the Pamlico Sound or something like that and you say yeah. that there so that was, the, that was the concept of what we wanted to do was to have a liverboard boat that we took as quickly as possible to a, the next nice sailing area and then they sailed there and it's silly having a sort of a big heavy cabined boat just to day sail in um, yeah. because and especially when I've been brought up as a dinghy sailor and um, the sailing has to be fun. And um, the, 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 the small light boats are much more fun. So that's, what, that's the, uh, the logic for saying we're having a power boat. One is because there's never any wind in the Pacific Northwest. And to get anywhere, you've got a motor. Um, and then the other side of it is, but when you do get somewhere, I want to sail around and have fun sailing around. And I don't particularly want to go anywhere. Um, I want to have fun. And well, so what we're Richard, doing now... Tell, uh, tell me about the dinghy. Okay. Well, um, as you know, I, I've been a catamaran designer for all all these years, 30 years, and only recently been doing trimarans. And the reason for, I know we're going to have this sort of, uh, we could have a long, long discussion on this at another <laughs> day, maybe we will. Um, but the catamaran makes a lot more sense in my mind as a cruising boat over about 30 feet. But the smaller boats, a... Um, something like my Strider that I sailed to the Soviet Union in, 24 foot, is, I guess it's partly because I've got older now, but it's, it's a beach cat. And sitting 
sitting like you do on a beach cat for hours on end is quite uncomfortable compared to sitting in a sort of, in effect, a proper chair like you do on a monohull. And so the smaller, that's why I've done the smaller trimarans because I think that at the smaller size under, let's say, 25 feet, that a the main hull of a trimaran works a lot better as a comfortable say, um, cockpit area and lounging area than uh, open trampoline does. Oh, um, yeah. You knew that 60 years ago, uh, but I only <laughs> learned that five years ago. It took me a long time to work that one out. Um, and so we did this Strike 18, which was the... Um, uh, main hull and then the beach cat outriggers and rig and then I for, and using a 16 foot beach cat and then I did the strike 16 which uses a 14 foot beach cat um, and is slightly smaller all round and now the latest one I'm doing is a strike 15 um, but that is not that is a racing boat it's not a uh, when I started building the, the Strike 18, my wife said, I'm never coming out with that. That's way too dangerous and frightening. And she loves it. Oh. But she definitely is not going to be coming out on the Strike 15. Oh. Um, it's going to be, it is going to be a, 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 serious, a serious sailor's boat. Um, and it's going to have... As I said, the main hull, when it's complete, the main hull is going to weigh about 110 pounds, um, and the outriggers are going to weigh about, I find it a bit hard working back from metric, but about 20 pounds each for the outriggers. Um, and um, it's going to have 140 square feet of sail, 150 square feet of sail. Hey. So it's going to be... And it's a single hander. And is it equipped? And then it's going to have a asymmetric as well. So potentially it's going to have 300 square feet of sail and weigh 250 pounds or something like that. Wow, that's a hot dog boat, boy. How, how do you feel about the issue of performance? I mean, where do you like to compromise? I guess it depends on what you intend to do with the boat. But. Um, uh, I, it, it seems to me like a lot of your boats uh, have, uh, you know, quite a lot of sail area for their weight. Um, it, it, it's one of, yeah, it, this, I've done uh, a whole sort of four, range of different boats with different amounts of either the, the light boat with a big rig, and then, I, but I've also done heavy boats with small rigs um but personally um i like the fun of sailing and so i always personally want to have a the performance but on as again as we've talked about earlier i don't uh think it's cost effective sometimes people go 95% of potential speed is usually enough and the extra 5% costs a serious amount of money and the other yeah. thing is that um, a lot of people can't actually, uh, haven't got the skill to really uh, take the full potential of a, of a too extreme a boat. Um, it's, it's, I always say it's like driving a car 60 knots, uh, 60 miles an hour is 6 knots, 80 miles an hour is 8 knots. And so most people sail their boats between 6 and 8 knots. It's like driving your car between 60 and 80 miles an hour. And basically, pretty much everyone can do that with a modern car. People say they do, can do 20 knots. That's like saying I can do 200 miles an hour in a car. Well, most people even if they bought a t car that did do 200 miles an hour, they can't drive at that speed. It's uh, such a totally different uh, way of, you know, you need a different skill set. You've actually Absolutely. got to be a driver. You can't just say, I'll get a car and drive it. Yeah. You've got to know how to drive. And it's yeah. going to be the same with a boat that's uh, 
the high performance boats, you've got to know how to do it. 